Hey, good afternoon, guys. Thank you guys so very much for joining today's Bible verse, man. Today's going to be a little bit different than what I normally do. Um, usually I take whatever the verses for that day, read the inspiration and the Bible uh, and, the, and the final prayer. Um, <clears throat> and that's all fine and dandy. I don't plan on, on, on shaying away from that too much. Um, but the reason that I'm telling you guys this is because uh, last night my wife and I were reading the book of Luke, specifically chapter four. And when I was getting to the end of it, right um there was something that when i read it I, the bible when you read it guys you can read it and it's one thing to read the words but when i read the bible i try to read it and i try and and i i picture everything in my head and and i try to set up like the scene and what was going on and jesus and and knowing what i know of him this there was this idea and this this concept and this realization that i made when reading the last couple of verses of chapter four that i felt was really important um, to talk to you guys today about um, and there's a reason why because it, it comes it, it it was an idea and it's it's a concept that has been with human beings ever since the beginning and still plagues us until this day and that's doubt right um, doubt and 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 doubt of of the existence of God the creator and Jesus the son and so I'm going to read these last couple of verses and I'm going to explain to you exactly what I guys what I mean guys as we get through it and um and and we're gonna go so i'm gonna read it first and then i'll switch it up and and i'll explain exactly what it is that i'm talking about all right so starting at verse 33 jesus was in a synagogue right it says here and in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil and cried out with a loud voice saying let us alone what have we to do with thee thou jesus of nazareth are you coming to destroy us? I know you. I know who you are, the Holy One of God, right? So demons were cast out by, by Jesus on a consistent basis, okay? I mean, he was coming across them in troves. I mean, if you read the New Testament, you're going to see that this was happening on pretty much a regular basis. He was not only healing the sick, he was coming across people who were possessed by demons. I mean, like I said, on a regular basis, and that was much more common, guys, because you got to remember that this was before Jesus Christ came and died for our salvation. So the demons were running across this world rampant because so many people didn't know the ways of God. And even the ways who did were just not honoring God the Father in the proper way. So it was so easy for demons to take a host like that, right? So moving forward, um, the demon recognizes Jesus and says, well, what are you doing here? Dude, this is not what we, oh, I mean... We're gonna have our day god told us that yeah we know that um but this is way too soon right so every time the demons saw him they they freaked out because they were like is he here already to torture us throw us on the lake of fire no they didn't but because god doesn't owe anyone an explanation least of all fallen angels jesus didn't say i'm here to do this and i'm here to do that he just said you're gonna leave and i don't want to see you again and that was pretty much it that's all he has to say right so in verse 35 it says and jesus rebuked him saying Holy thy peace and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the mist, he came out of him and hurt him not. And you know what, guys? I want to do this without the old English because that'll be a lot more beneficial. So excuse the interruption. I already I still have it marked here um, because it was the last chapter that I read last night. Right. So when we go, we are now on what chapter? I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, chapter four, verse thirty five. Right. So in verse thirty five. <clears throat> Jesus says, be quiet, Jesus said sternly, and come out of him. Then the demon threw the man down before them all and came out without injuring him. Uh, verse 36 goes on to say, all the people were amazed and said to each other, what words these are? With authority and power, he gives orders to impure spirits and they come out. Verse 37 goes on to say, and the news about him spread throughout the surrounding area. So. Never before had anyone seen this, guys. And the reason I'm reading it from my Bible is because my Bible does away with the old English and it's it's a lot easier. And I want to reach out to a crowd of people that understands more words, not with all the thousand and dies, um, because it's just a lot easier for us to speak in, in contemporary English, right? Um, so that brings me through verse 37. So we're going to go ahead um, from verse 38. But here, guys, I mean, it's even, it's even saying it clearly. Jesus is telling these evil spirits, get out. Don't say a word and leave. I don't want to see you. That right there shows the power of Jesus Christ, guys. He wasn't there to play with these demons. He's not. He knows who they are, but even more importantly, they know who he is. And they would tremble at the sight of him because they knew who he was, right? 
Jesus would cast out legions of demons who were inherit who, who would inhabit one person. Okay, they have no power. They people say, well, demons. A lot of people are under the the uh, assumption that demons only listen to the devil. Absolutely not. Demons are they will they listen to the devil. He is their prince, but God is their king. Always remember that. Okay, going on to verse thirty eight. It says Jesus left the synagogue and went home to uh, went to the home of Simon. Now Simon's mother-in-law was suffering from a high fever, and they asked Jesus to help her. So he bent over and rebuked the fever, and it left her. She got up and at once began to wait on them. Uh, verse forty says, at sunset the people brought to Jesus all who had various kinds of sickness, and laying his hands on each one, he healed them. Verse 41 goes on to say, Moreover, demons came out of many people shouting, You are the Son of God. But he rebuked them and would not allow them to speak because they knew he was the Messiah. That's the most important part that I wanted to speak to you guys about. Again, verse 41. We're going to get back to that. I'm going to finish off the chapter, verses 42 through 44, and then I'm going to come back to verse 41. Okay. Verse 42 says, At daybreak, Jesus went out to a solitary place. The people were looking for him, and when they came to where he was, they tried to keep him from leaving them. But he said, I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns also, because that is why I was sent. And he kept on preaching in the synagogues of Judea. Okay, so what does all that mean, guys? Now, from, from 42 to 44, basically what it means is that people knew the power of Christ, right? The area that he was in. People were so amazed by him and so in love with him and the way that he preached and the authority of God that he brought that they did not want him to leave. Honestly, if Jesus was around me, I wouldn't want him to leave either. I'm like, nah, man. You know what I mean? Of course, that's not that's a, that's not I don't even think it's selfishness. I mean, you feel the love of Jesus Christ. Of course, you're never going to want him to leave. But through his humbleness and his duty of servitude to the father, which he took when he which he wore honorably on his heart, he said, I have to go, guys, I have to go because I can't only give you guys this gift. My my mission is to spread the word of my father as far as I can. So, of course, he left. And that's why he left. But I'm sure that the ever that the mark that he left on that town was one where now I mean, look, guys, we are in a country that is extremely distant from where this all took place. And we all know the word of Jesus Christ. It's it's known in every continent right now, whether people accept it or not, is something completely different. But this is what I wanted to talk to you guys about in verse 41. This is what hit me like a ton of bricks last night when I was reading it. My wife and I, um, I actually stopped and spoke to her about this. And we spoke about we spoke about this for a little while. Uh, verse 41. Moreover, OK, the demons came out of many people shouting, you are the son of God. But he rebuked them and would not allow them to speak because they knew he was the Messiah, right? He would not allow them to speak. Why is that important, guys? He would not allow them to speak for one simple reason. He didn't want people, right? He didn't want people hearing what they were going to say for this simple reason. If he allowed the demons to address the people and say, this is the son of God, then now we are accepting God out of fear because we see that there's a spiritual battle going on and we're not accepting God the Father through God the Son, which through the predication which he wanted us to under the foundation which he would have wanted us to. And that is through love and faith, guys. See, a lot of us, and, and especially the Pharisees, constantly spent their time looking for ways to kill or hurt or arrest Jesus and, and accusing him of being a blasphemer, right? And they never could. Well, how could they? He's Jesus Christ. Um, but see, that was the thing was that Jesus and in his infinite wisdom did not want to allow these demons to make it easy for people. Right. He didn't want it to be a thing where people were like, well, you know, you have to because, yo, these demons told us straight out. God does not want the words of evil beings to be the reason why you believe in him, the reason why you love him, the reason why you serve him. So when Jesus Christ did not allow these demons to speak, it wasn't because he was trying to flaunt his muscles, right? It wasn't because he was trying to be like, oh, I'm Mr. Big Bad Man. No, it wasn't that at all, guys. He did not allow these demons to speak because he did not want them to interfere with the foundation upon which he introduced the love and the word of God the Father to this world. And if the demons had their way, today we would all fear Jesus 
and fear God as so, okay, well, yeah, of course we're going to fear them because they're the more powerful ones. And yeah, we're going to fear him, but that would have been cheapening it, right? That would have been making it worth less of what it was, which is to say, I don't want to believe in God because I'm scared to go to hell. Am I scared to go to hell? Absolutely. But I don't believe in God and I don't serve God. And especially in the last few months, the way that I wake up, I wake up with Christian songs in my head. I wake up feeling amazing. I wake up with it like, like I feel like a new man, right? And the reason that I feel that way is because God has infused me with the Holy Spirit. And that's the foundation upon which God wants you to love him, guys. He doesn't want us. He would never. Jesus never wanted to allow a demon to speak even one word to a person because that in, in essence would have given the Pharisees their way and say, oh, well, there's a sign if you want it. It's either you pick Jesus or you pick at uh, you pick Jesus and you pick God, the son and essentially God, the father through God, the son through the Holy Spirit or or the demons, right? Jesus did not want them interfering. He did not want them making, he did not want demons and evil spirits making it easy for people to say, hey, you know what? Hey, we got to choose one side or another. He wanted you to do that through your heart, through love, okay? And, and through the word that he preached. And that's exactly why he made it constantly a point to tell people, do not tell anyone I healed you. Do not tell anyone I cast this evil spirit out, please. Was it because he didn't want to do it? Absolutely not. He did it with indignance. He loved doing it. But his main mission, and he said several times in the scriptures from his lips, my mission is to spread the word of my father. My mission is to spread the good news that I have come to bring. It wasn't to heal and it wasn't to cast out demons. And he did it anyway. He did it constantly and he did it with love, never asking anything in return. But that was not the reason why he came. And he wanted people to know that. Now, did they listen? No, they didn't listen. Of course, they didn't listen. They they did it anyway. They went and told, of course, they're going to tell people. They're excited. This man, the Messiah is here. He's casting out demons. He's giving people their sight. He's giving people their limbs back. He's doing all of these amazing things. But the most important thing that he did, guys, was bring us the word of him. He brought the good news of salvation through his own sacrifice, guys. And knowing that it was going to happen, he still did it with an amazing attitude, with love and willingness and 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 teaching and authority and just made it so that we could know that love right and there's no greater gift that human beings are ever going to receive ever in our history guys from from adam until the very last human being takes their last breath there will be no gift greater that than than the one of salvation that jesus christ gave to us guys so i hope that that clears a lot up guys because when you read the bible it's very easy it is very easy to read it and just read it for the words on the page and take them and 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 kind of miss a lot of the underlying context but make no mistake that everything that jesus did had significance right and the fact that he didn't allow demons to open their mouth was because he did not want us as a people to become aware of the spiritual battles around us okay jesus didn't feel that we needed to know about it and he was right i, I, I for whatever reasons they him and, and and god the father do not want us to know the things that we don't know it is not our place to question it it is our place to serve the same way that if jesus christ himself was so happy and so honored and so noble to be the servant that he was why can we not have that same honor right so you know that's just something that i wanted to share with you guys and god was tugging at my heart to share with you guys because i thought it was so powerful but it's something that is so easy to miss if you're not really picturing what was going down and the way it was going down so let's go ahead and move into a prayer, guys. This is going to be an impromptu prayer. I'm just going to do one um, off the top of my head. I know usually we do the one that's written and then we get into it, but um, I, I want to pray with you guys. So if you want to pray with me, please pray with me. If not, I will pray for you, your family, your friends, your health, your safety. But most of all, that you decide to procure that relationship with Jesus Christ. Because guys, there is no, no way to God the Father and through the gates of heaven except through God the Son. Make Rest assured and make no mistake, guys. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for another day of life, Lord Jesus. We thank you for all the things that we take for granted every day. Every every time we breathe in, Lord Jesus, every time we we blink, we breathe, we speak to our children, every time that we turn on the TV, every time that we answer our phone, every single action that we take throughout the day, Lord Jesus, was is, is because you've given us the opportunity to do so. We know, Father, that we are so disobedient to you, and yet you still love us, Lord, and you show us what true love really is, Father God. We thank you, Lord, because we know that this planet that we live on is nothing but just a mere whisper of your power, Father, and we don't even know what else you have out there. But I do know that when we enter the gates of heaven, and although it be a narrow path, Father, that as many of us are as jam-packed on that narrow path as possible, Lord Jesus, and we thank you that you sacrificed the only pure blood that a human being has ever had and ever will have so that we can enter the gates of heaven because we were so unworthy and we are still unworthy, Lord Jesus. Our acts of righteousness are but dirty rags and compared to you. 
our acts of righteousness and good works are in are but dirty rice compared to God the Father. But we know that we will continue to try to serve you, not because we can add to the salvation that you gave us, but because, Father God, we want to show you the gratitude for what you did for us, and we want to treat each other the way that you would have us treat each other. We want it to be so that when you show up, Father God, whatever we're doing that you're proud of, because I am definitely proud of you, Father God, and I am definitely proud of you, Lord Jesus Christ. There's no one that I am more proud of, and I thank you for the opportunity that you give me. I thank you for the privilege to minister to my children every day, to minister with my wife and 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 live our life in you, Lord Jesus, a life that I regret that took me so long to get to, Lord Jesus. But when I finally realized the Holy Spirit, I realized how badly I was living. And I'm just so glad that I realized it before it was too late, Lord Jesus. And so I thank you, Father God. I praise you and we love you. We thank you for the opportunity to repent for our sins. We thank you for every blessing that you give us every single day. We repent for our sins in your holy and precious name. And we give you our souls as we wake, as we sleep, and in every action that we take in your holy and precious and beautiful name. We pray, Father God. Amen. Thank you guys so much for being with me, man. It is, I am very honored to be with you guys every single day, every single prayer. I'm going to start throwing a lot more into this, guys. Um, not just doing the verse of the day. Whenever I see stuff like this, I'm going to go ahead and go over it with you because it's very important that more and more people realize that reading the Bible is a great exercise. But when you read the Bible, we need to try to understand the underlying context behind it, guys, because there is so much behind it. And when Jesus came, I mean, you can literally fill up this planet with books about the parables and how he did things and why he did things and how wise he was. And, and there's just, you know, nothing else I can say. As always, guys, please be safe. Be good. Be blessed. I'll see you when I see you. God bless each and every one of you and peace.